you know, as an adult, LGBT pride is somewhat of a thing that I guess I don't, I don't wear loudly. Like even my mother had called me the other day asking about some stylistic questions. And I told her, I was like, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm a dude most days. So I don't know if I can even help you, you know, how to be a diva and all that. <laughs> but I know that when I think for me, what shows up is the little boy, the little Cameron who didn't have anyone near him at all that could tell him in a positive way, Hey, this is who you are. You are loved for it. Um, Mostly, I was surrounded by a lot of religious people, a lot of conservative people. I grew up in the Midwest, pretty much, and my family originated from the South. So there wasn't much freedom to explore who I was as a child. So who I am now, I guess, is trying to be the, the guide and light for that inner child. So when June comes around, it's more of a, I guess I don't necessarily step out loud and proud as people probably want me to. I just kind of, I think just existing is good enough. Existing, breathing, and coming out of that tunnel of shame. That's how I kind of live with pride. Who, who is pride for? Pride is for people who, the little Cameron who, knew that they were different, but were never celebrated or um, beyond tolerated who they were. I feel like that's something that I was told a lot is, well, you're tolerated. <laughs> I don't want to just be tolerated. I want to be, I want to be embraced. I want to be accepted. I want to be loved. And I think pride is a way of doing that work myself for yeah. myself and then through my actions on how i treat myself then maybe others will acquiesce and learn oh he's that type of bitch <laughs> Not better. we better step correctly because this is how he treats himself this is the journey he's gone on we should take our cues from him so pride i think is it's good for us but it's also educational when do you think that was a shift in your life where you saw pride becoming that thing for you, like educational, something that was for you? Like, you're like, oh, this isn't bypassing me. This is actually something I'm a part of. 26? <laughs> I've been, I guess probably, probably uh, past the time when you're, uh, when they said the brain finishes developing uh, when you're like 25 for us dudes, right? And so once I hit 26, I started to really also go through a bunch of life. Uh, you know, I was, I never got to come out. I was actually outed when I was 16 and that was a whole situation and ordeal. And so from 16 all the way to 25, you've got this much life where you get to experience what it is to kind of live as you are, but you're still under the confines of all this other doctrine and stuff of that that just infest its way into your um your cerebral centers and once i got from 16 to 25 hit 26 i started to think differently i started to move differently i had more of a sense of self i started to understand that it's okay just to be i think about myself in that way too and i do remember there was like a specific time where we like went to like some place in the mountains when I was in college and there was a pride event and I was with people I hadn't come out with come out to and I wasn't even quite like sure how I wanted that to happen but they wanted to go like walk through the pride like event stuff and so like I got like rainbow flags and stuff and you know I remember like during that like short time and like taking a photo with my little rainbow flag I was like oh okay this is what this appears to be and then from then on out it was like oh okay let's understand a little bit more about what this month actually is for uh versus just like city bank sponsoring like a tent <laughs> festival <laughs> in Asheville. <laughs> i think between those ages of 16 and 25 i it's it's how do i call it uh, the tweak zone and 
I've always been a person who has been heavier set, which just always been that way, even as a dancer. So then, you know, thick thighs save lives. I've saved nations. <laughs> Thank you for your honor. Uh, oh, my, my, my honor. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, these are the images that I saw of what gay was. And so even then there was kind of a questioning within myself. Well, can I be gay and be heavy? Can I be gay and be black? Um, can I be gay and be a spiritual person? All these intersectionalities that kind of come into play that really make you question your placement in the community. And I think from the age of 16 to 25, it was me trying to find my way into the community, but also understanding that sometimes the community didn't want me in it because they're even in you know, in the heterosexual world, this is what a ideal male looks like. This is what an ideal female looks like. And so when you get into the LGBTQIA world, it becomes a whole different galaxy. Yeah. yeah. Then you run into the same roadblock. Oh, you're fat and you're black. It even sounds that sometimes there's a predominant identity that's calling for all of the attention or a situation <laughs> yeah. is calling attention of that identity. Um, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, like just from being a larger body, from being gay, from being black, from being anything else that crosses. Um, and that's a big part of pride I like to observe is how there's so much intersectionality in how other identities come. And that that's a, that's a big thing. I think Lizzo, she had watched TV, music videos, and never saw anyone that looked like her. And she got on stage and said, well, bitch, looks like it has to be you. <laughs> and I can tell you, I started going to the gym at 16 and I never, ever saw anyone like me on stage, much less in the room some of the time, even up till now. In those spaces, pretty much, it's not a, a horn tutor. I, I would actually tell people it's a very lonely place to be. Yeah. Because who do I go to? If I'm getting pushback for being me in these spaces, we're getting a little better. I know a few amazing people who I talk to them about kind of the same things. And it's great. I feel so, so grateful and I won't cry. I won't cry. But I just think it's awesome now that so many years later, there are people who are kind of like, I can do it. I can do it as, as, as queer as I am, as fat as I may be. I can stand in this position and deliver uh, a grade eight quality class. I have also been blessed and privileged to have changed minds, to have shown people something new, something fresh. It was like my, my, my weakness that should not have allowed me into the industry and to that space was actually a positive because people got to see a real human being do real things, feel real things, show off real things. And I think that speaks to the human soul and the word it actually craves. Uh, six packs, eight packs, that shit's cute. I know what you have to do to get it. And it's not that fun <laughs> versus I, I showed up day in, day out. And there were some magical moments on that stage where I felt closer to God closer to the source and I don't think I have felt that close in a long time I'm figuring out other ways to do it what challenges have you had in self-expression and perhaps were there ways you got over them were there ways that it just flipped one day like I can say this I can act this way so sometimes I had to pull back because I reminded myself you're the only black male teacher here there are no other black male teachers um, it could mean your life these days if you do anything too grandiose, too big, and you offend someone, and then they go get their husband, or you just, these are the thoughts that go through the marginalized. <laughs> Instructor said, I'm surrounded by the clan. <laughs> Not that they're the clan. <laughs> and it kind of just feels like I have to be careful. But the beautiful part about it is, um, there would be times where I'd have some black people come in the class 
or some queers that would come to the class. And I kind of be able to and realize that I can attract allyship in my uh, vicinity. Right. It's like putting it, it's a, it, you create a persona, um, mm-hmm. a heightened version of yourself. I think that's Sasha what Fierce. we, Sasha Fierce. I think that's Sasha ultimately Fierce. what we're doing. It's like, it's still us and we're opting to demonstrate the most elevated characteristics of what we believe are our strengths. And that's what Les Mills empowers us to do. That's what the fitness industry, I hope, continues to empower us to do. Um, yes. And so it is, it's hard to sometimes think like, I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, you know, it, I challenge sometimes with authenticity because I'm like, well, if someone just ran into me, which has happened a lot, like just ran into me in the wild, what are they going to think? They're going to think I'm a fraud. And I think it is just like, it's almost like a, a magnifying glass or like putting yourself on a jumbotron or something, you know, like people see like the energy of your face and just like the, the things you say, but that's not who I am. That's often not who I'm at, at all. Um, and so I've, I've struggled with that in the past with self-expression of how to, to bring that alive, but also like keep it really true to me. And I think that was something even just recently that I've kind of felt more empowered to do of just, even with like jokes and like, just, you know, I'm just a very kind of saucy person. And I, I got feedback one time that was, that made me really smile. And it said, um, you're just the right amount of raunchy with really sweetness or something and i really liked mm-hmm. that because it acknowledged kind of that sexual side that kind yeah. of like pushing the envelope kind of side that i do like and when i can share that and jam especially like i'll just say stuff and like you know sometimes it is those kinds of jokes we have as insiders of the queer community we'll say something that's kind of coded and like yeah you'll see a couple people snicker but most people mm-hmm. won't get it and for me, I would used to say like, oh, I won't do that. I don't want to make other people uncomfortable. And I'm like, no, fuck it. Like if, if they don't like that, they don't have to come back to my class. And the people that were really going to enjoy that are going to continue coming. Mm-hmm. The moment brings you, you step up to the moment and then you step back and you have to recharge from that because it is a lot of you elevating the best parts of yourself and we we chatted about this very recently about meeting your idols or wanting to meet someone that you've admired for so long and i think that is really exciting valuable at the same time i think that the best of those people you've already got yep you're seeing it you're seeing it produced and like really well cut and like you see it when you go to a live event or something like you're, you're, you get to see those people at, at their, at their height, their ultimate ham, their ultimate Judson. And that's not to say they're like awful people <laughs> outside of that. But, but when you talk to them, like outside of that stuff, or you like want to hang out with them or you want to be their best friend, you realize, Oh, these are humans with flaws and these are humans mm-hmm. with like really fun intricacies. Like it's not all problems. Yes. But I might, I might not mess with this person outside of what I admire them in. And that's fine. I think at the same time, we have to be really careful about that and manage this expectation. I think one thing and how we show up is not only our personality and our facial expressions and stuff, but also the stuff that we wear. Um, one thing I know and see and I'm excited about is less focus on a gender binary and athletic apparel and what we're wearing to dance, to teach, to work out, to run. What advice would you have for people that would want to explore the other side of the store? In most stores, it's hard to find clothes that fit well, comfortably. Um, Certain companies will not acquiesce to your needs, basic needs. I just need a shirt that'll fit and not just squeeze me tight. (laughs) Yep. A center. Um, but yeah, I, I in the beginning of my, my career was really just a bunch of oversized pants and oversized shirts. Um, and I now that I think back on it, not only as a means to feel comfortable, but also as a means to be seen less for my body. Because if they couldn't see um, the true form of my figure, because the clothes are so big, then they wouldn't be able to really judge what it is that they see. 
Well, unfortunately, it's still a journey that I'm taking when it comes to clothes and how to fit the body that you have in the present moment. Um, Because I've also gone through a weight loss journey. And I know we're talking about the binary and the gender, and I just, I don't know, it all kind of correlates. I have to think about multiple things versus yeah. one, if that that's, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, but I got comfortable wearing leggings and very, very short shorts to the point where I was like, if these go any higher, sir, they're going to see your lower cheek. <laughs> and it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, because I, I got a lot of, um, and not that the compliments make the wearing the clothes matter more, but I did get compliments. But it's also <laughs> like, no, how do you feel? And I felt a bit freer wearing these more form-fitting clothes as opposed to just being loose all the time out of fear that people would see me. But the thing is, people are already seeing me anyway. They're already making comments, the small-minded ones. So just wear what you want to wear, if you can. Around Pride season two, thinking about when these issues and acceptance is kind of at the forefront, if you did have that one special wish and it could be anything that would help queer people feel more comfortable, more accepted, would better the environment of the fitness industry for queer people, uh, what would that one wish be for you, at least today? Let people be as they are. That is one of the problem society at large is we're always trying to form one another to be this, to be that, to do this, to do that. And I think that cuts a lot of people off from their, their superpower, their innate ability. Luckily, I survived all the things that were trying to form me to be X, Y, and Z, because there's a lot of um, brainwashing that we run into as kids and it's not two men in a movie kissing if i was just allowed to be more i would have maybe gotten centered faster you're teaching and you look back at the back of the classroom where there's big windows and you see little cameron watching watching you do what you do what do you think that little person is thinking or feeling proud proud beyond the vernacular he could even express. I didn't die. I didn't falter. I kept my softness, even in a world where they tried to make me hard. I kept loving. I didn't stop hugging. That's one thing I used to do as a kid was I was a big hugger and I used to be chastised for it. I think he would be like, well done. He would be the hero that I needed all along. Anyone out there who may be struggling with a self, other, others, be patient with yourself. Be gracious. Feel feelings. Go to therapy if you need to. Don't be afraid of you. Nothing to be afraid of. Whatever you find on your journey of self-care, which can be (laughs) gloomy, distressing, rightful, understand that Underneath that discovery is a being who wants to be loved, wants to be cared for. Go in grace. And and if you can, extend that grace to others.